We're thrilled to have you back uh, to this, our show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Human Architecture, this being our 312th show, and this is our 11th and final time, at least we are intending that, to talk about membering Lahaina for all of us coming together, and it's primarily us three inviting all you us watching, which is you, Martin Ancelini, up there in Manoa. Hi, Martin. Hello. And it's Yudas Soto Brown up in your Diamond Head volcano, sort of. Hello. And and it's me, Martin Despang, on as close as possible to you in Waikiki on its edge, facing the park that separates us. So uh, we want to. This is Thanksgiving week, so Thanksgiving edition. We want to give thanks to who uh, at least Yudas Soto and my, and we said kind of um, you know pre-birth for you, Martin was giving us a good time zeitgeist-wise, and that is uh, Rosalind Carter, who had left us at least here on Earth last Sunday in the age of 96. So uh, thank you, Rosalind, and thank you, Jimmy. And sorry, Jimmy, you have to be without her now for a while. And so again, these were the good times. These were the 70s that I was in my teens and you were in your twins, DeSoto. So we had good times. And thanks to you, Martin, slide 25, you bring these good times back to Lahaina. And uh, I just came back from uh, San Francisco. I should say hi from Joey and Clara and Kurt Sandburn, who says hi to you guys. And the key word of, that we have to share and show is for me, retrofitting, because this is what's happening to the Trans-American building, which um, Foster is redoing. So we have to uh, share that and what we can learn from that. So retrofitting means you bring something back to the way it was, but the way Foster always does it is he gives it a twist to make it even a little bit better, or at least contemporarily, gives it a con contemporary twist. So what do we see here, and how how is that about your proposal, Martin? So uh, are we on... Uh, we're on 25. Right? We're on the aerial yeah. photograph that we borrowed from Amazon, so we're promoting it to be bought by someone. <laughs> yes, this is an image from the Department of Interior Geological, Geological Survey from 1980. And uh, what happens with that image is that uh, we really see that at that time, the whole uh, lobe uh, of, 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 I mean, surrounding of the surrounding areas of Lahaina was cultivated mainly with sugar cane crops. Uh, this, uh, of course, was artificial. Uh, it came after that, uh, uh, after the natural, uh, let's say, forest uh, or or, uh, or or natural uh, vegetation that was up there, which is not ideal, but at least it, it was somehow keeping water. There was an irrigation system for these crops, which is good. Now. Uh, what we see is basically a very desertic landscape. Uh, and this was, even with very rigid uh, uh, codes, this was what caused partly what caused the disaster. That it was not a, a near, it was not a sponge. We need to generate a, a sponge in the territory, of course, to make it more green, even in dry periods. Uh, to keep water as much as possible in land, uh, and also to have water available for uh, refreshing the, 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 the built environment and in case of an emergency as it, ha it happened. So uh, we have to think the, the uh, native Hawaiian uh, wisdom, knowledge, uh, knew how to deal with water in slope, very good. I am not, of course, the person to talk about that. Uh, but we have to 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 keep this knowledge. Uh, 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 just as a, as an as an interesting uh, information in, in COP28 that will take place in uh, a couple of weeks, for the first time they will consider there there is a whole uh, chapter that will consider consider indigenous knowledge for mitigation of climate change. Uh, as energy re re consumption reduction, as well as uh, re uh, resiliency building. So this is very interesting. We should keep some of the technologies of the very sophisticated and complex knowledge 
uh, of, of topography, water management, and land uh, in this, uh, uh, to, like to rebuild the territorial state. Uh, so just to finish, we have to, to, to understand uh, the rebuilding of Lehaina, not just as the reconstruction of the buildings, but as a territorial strategy. And water, as always happened here in Hawaii for centuries, is probably the most important element. Uh, we have to incorporate uh, like the division of waters, like the sewage system, the rainwater, and the used water, which could be uh, uh, reused, and uh, to think about a whole territorial system of water cleaning, water management, irrigation, uh, a, a, an eatable forest and a, a productive forest on the upper slopes of, of Lehaina, as well as inside the built of environment, as we were talking last time. No? We can bring green and, of course, water to the built environment. This will help us to uh, refresh the, the, the hot, the, the, the heat the, uh, spaces uh, of, of Lehaina. And again, wa wa water will allow us to uh, be more resilient in the case of fire, of course. No? Absolutely. And if you guys uh, join us the first time for this show, go back to the previous shows where we show the whole the whole scope. And let's go to 42, slide 42 quick here, because um, just saying up front, no, we did not wish this would ever happen. Uh, it's tragic, the whole having burned away. And no, we are not you know, using this as to install a smart city in, in the negative way. We talked about that a couple of times, but since it's happened, let's now, uh, you know, make the best out of it. And, and these are events, you know, sometimes they're positive events, which we, which we see here, which was the World Expo. And we want to do a, a shout out to a dear colleague uh, of, of ours, Martine, and I just want to share again a, a couple of things here where the top left in the show sequences with Larry Medlin, we were talking about um, that the multiple different pavilions for for the nations. There was, we have Toyo Ito coming. He reached out to a couple of, of us, a couple of our colleagues. They're actually going to have him come and speak on December the 7th uh, in the auditorium. We cannot be there because we are going to be at our uh, think that Kauai Christmas events and awards ceremony, all of us, but hopefully um, everyone else goes to this event and, and listens to, and not just listening to, but also asking questions, maybe giving him ideas. That's important. And, uh, you know, uh, Toyo was really given a hard time by my hometown, by the authorities. They drove him crazy and saying, you can't just do your pepper tubes. You have to do this and that an additional belt and suspenders and blah, 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 to a degree that him and his collaborator, Fry Auto, were pretty pissed and done and said, you know, these projects are now don't have anything to do with it anymore. They pushed him over, over the limit. They also pushed the very young architect, Florian Nagla, over the limit who won a, and this is what we are opting for, Martin. We say we need, we need competitions. We need open competitions. We're both big fans and Metal Bled as well as you, DeSoto, and we have been talking with him about it at all. He, uh, he uh, you know, won an international competition and it didn't matter that he was German. He just happened to be German, but he was not even from Northern Germany. He was from Bavaria, which is my adopted home now. And he won the competition and uh, the, uh, the Germany as a client drove him crazy and they basically didn't come together um, he then, you know, uh, did great stuff elsewhere and went back to Bavaria, where he is a professor at, at Tumrau and now a colleague of mine, Gwen Martins, uh, both academic and practicing colleague, uh, Hi Gwen, uh, brings uh, Florian back these days and making give a lecture. So these are all great examples. And, um, you know, we have been very um, empowered, felt very empowered, very uh, motivated by uh, you know, Julius Nutra that we see up there at the second from top right, who was doing with uh, 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 Herzog, Thomas Herzog, who was my sister's professor at film because she studied at film back then. And they did these majestic uh, wooden umbrellas. And also, of course, there's Peter Zumthor that we see second from top left, who is always, as is in this written part here, this is a beginning design conference where they had 
this uh, professor, assistant professor in Kansas had made this list of precedent studies, which is one of the learning tools in academia. And these are a couple of projects that show up there. And they included us little guys with that Ilmazi school that integrated learning for all the senses. And it really, the, 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 we, we contributed with uh, what, uh, you know, now I'm, I'm going to let you say who we shout out to. And, and we knew each other through our tram station project that we also try to make a salt fly. So there's a connection to Hawaii. But that project was had to be finished for the expo. But which was cooking when the expo was 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 going on the way is the solid timber school. So we're saying these events, hopefully in a positive way. And the motto of the expo in in, in two thousand was mention natura technic, which means human and natural environment and what humans create in the best sense as technology, as to you know even uh, improve that even more. So uh, tell us about the dear colleague, a good friend of both of us, and also how there is a school of thought between you Colombian guys and, you know, the way <laughs> you think about, uh, you know, the built and the natural environment uh, in, might it be in Hanover as in this case, and then they rebuilt the, 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 the image at the very bottom is actually the having been uh, taking the, the building down, the pavilion down where it was temporarily over the expo and then rebuilding it in another place at a lake in Germany. So who is that and who do we shout out to, Martin? Yeah, so this is Daniel uh, Bonilla, uh, a, a very, uh, I would say, tranquil and good colleague uh, in, in Colombia with a very interesting, very heterogeneous uh, uh, work along his, his life. I, I admire him very much. We have shared some 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 thoughts uh, in in, in uh, uh, back in Colombia. The, there is also another building at the expo that is the Simon Belles project made out of bamboo. It is not as as let's say I would I would not say that it's uh, as as complex as this building in terms of its its simpleness. Uh, but in in all the cases, what we are seeing here is light. Buildings, no, because probably because of the expo uh, uh, approach of being uh, easy to build and also easy to dismantle, no. Uh, and uh, what that we should start thinking about Lahaina is uh, uh, ah, another factor. Sorry, the the wood materials, the vegetable materials. Uh, of course, everybody would be very afraid to build out of wood in Lahaina, but uh, there is many reasons why. Keep thinking about wood, no? Because also other uh, uh, elements such as mainly plastic, carpets, curtains, and so on will, in any concrete construction, will, in any case, uh, uh, be fired, no? So uh, building with wood will uh, make us think about uh, fire resistance uh, in a in a general strategy. Uh, we, we saw that doesn't matter uh, which is the material of the construction in if there is not a, like a global strategy uh, there will not th there will be fire uh, in any case uh, so uh, these constructions are made out of wood no uh, and other materials so how can we start uh, 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 really providing pertinent solutions in colombia we have had we were talking before many disasters no we had floods we had uh, earthquakes we had uh, volcanoes, we have everything. So somehow, uh, and we were in many cases successful in providing shelter to those people that is not migrating uh, abroad to other countries. So somehow hosting them provisionally somewhere where they are, uh, and uh, also uh, like providing new permanent permanent residences. And probably, and this is important, the most successful projects are the ones that on which the provisional structure are thought to be permanent. So if we build something that is provisionally but good enough, we will be able to, to somehow, uh, 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 or people will be able to somehow habitate it. We were talking a lot about appropriation and to generate a home out of these dwellings, no? uh, like a really uh, 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 be make, making them theirs. So this is the first strategy that I think we would 
probably uh, this, uh, humbly suggest to do. Like to think about provisional uh, dwellings that will be able to be per permanent at least for a period, or uh, uh, thinking about sustainability, uh, w uh, being able to reuse the materials that were used uh, for this provisional construction. And wood for that is perfect. We can just unscrew it and build it back again in, in, in somewhere else, uh, or just uh, leave it as it is and uh, uh, keep improving it. Uh, and this is what we see in all these beautiful projects that you were talking about, uh, that are like projects that are flexible. No? We as architects, many of the buildings of the Heine, I remember your presentation, the Soto, uh, had different uses at the beginning. No? Like a uh, yeah. meeting space became a museum and uh, and uh, residences became shops and so on. No? So thinking yeah. uh, about the reuse from the techni technical point of view as well as the reuse from the functional point of view. Yeah, and if we go to the previous, uh, the, the prior to this picture, 41, I mean, the, these projects, I mean, you can now say after the disaster, you become really scared, right? And you become very... Um, traumatized, which is, of course, you know, people become personally, but somehow this is what we're trying to do, empower people to be positive again and, and hopeful. So these are, that, therefore, the projects have to be bold and they have to try and they have to, as you did here, and we are now sharing with the audience a few mm -hmm. seconds after I took these pictures of you, what happened? You share. <laughs> it completely got destroyed. There was a lot of wind, as, uh, <laughs> and the and the and the model got destroyed, dismantled. Actually, so, I still have the pieces here to make another model. <laughs> See, and, and and that's the point. Now people might say, "Oh my God!" Then don't don't you know play it safe, be on the safe side. No, uh, you know this is experimentation. This is prototyping. And if we go back to forty two, the previous one. This is how all these projects, they were serious. They bought the best of masterminds, you know, as Julius Natura, as the Pope of wood construction, who became, as I shared, our spiritual master for the, for the Solid Timber School. This is all, this is all the, the, uh, the avant-garde of uh, our discipline of architecture, empowering and encouraging each other to go in, above and beyond. And this is what truly Lahaina deserves. This is the point that we're basically making. But if we can go to 42 now, uh, the, the, the kind of the give and take goes both ways, right? And, and as much as we hope that we can give the best, as you, the Soto, always share that you like, if we bring the best from our cultures. But as we see in 42, um, it's also that we, Martin, uh, you and I, the two Martins, are going to learn a lot, you know, from, from here as well for where we are from. And if, uh, Michael, you can get us, 54, uh, then we will see because, you know, what, what my culture now is November, but we had October and this is October Fest. And so Munich, where another professor, a colleague of um, basic Florian Nagla said, as long as we have October Fest in Munich, we're never going to be innovative again as we used to be in 72 with the Olympics that we keep talking about. And this is where the root of our Danish boss booster, Met Noblet, is there from the Olympics project, uh, as, you know, when we always have to portray, you call it, I think, Martin musealizing. I mean, you, the sort of being the museum guy, right? So you, you, you pretend, you, you, you stage it, you know, as you want to be perceived, but not really how you are. So he was provocatively saying, you know, when we had COVID again, how, what a tragic event, right? But it, it, he said his point was like, okay, use this as an opportunity to rethink who we are and not just how we want to be seen, right? So share a little bit more, Martin, what you see as an opportunity to hear us both coaching, both in, in the travel industry management class, a school as in architecture, what you see to learn as a potential for your culture. Share a little bit more. Yeah. You've been touching on that here and there, but tell us more. Yeah, no, I have, I mean, I have, uh, is, uh, I have been here in Hawaii uh, I am very positively impressed. Uh, uh, Hawaiians are very critical with the tourism industry, but I am very positively impressed about how it is managed. Because I, being 
local somehow. I mean, I am. I live here. I try to go to local beaches, and uh, I really perceive when when I go to the mainstream of tourism, which is very localized. Uh, uh, somehow, the many areas of the of the island of Oahu, which is a very crowded island with a lot of tourist, tourism coming coming, still feel uh, uh, local. And, and this is this is good, no? I, I think this is something that we have to admire about Hawaiian culture, and probably in Maui will be much more, and in in Hawaii will be even much more, no? So so this is good, and this is something that we can export. There are there are other uh, areas of the world where tourism completely destroyed the territory, such as for example what's happening in Spain, in the coast, no? Uh, you can uh, in in many cases it is local tourism, but but uh, it is like there is no local identity apart, like from the church in the middle that you cannot even find it. Here you really feel the, the, the nature, you, you, you have super generous public spaces, and, and this, is, this is beautiful, no? And uh, it is yeah, something and, that, yep. Yeah, and Turkey, Spain, and Urban, and Oahu, next slide. Uh, and people, I was just talking, people in Barcelona, where Joey has lived, as DeSoto, you and I have been reporting about here and there, I mean, Barcelonians are going up and again. I mean, they basically say no tourism anymore. It's it's killing us. So you, I mean, we're walking this fine line here too. It's not as easy as maybe if for you who have not been here, maybe you know, not as long as you know the Soto. You've been born here, and I've been here eleven years. But it will kind of creep up on you more, Marti. And sorry to say, but we're gonna keep. Yeah, keep it positive. And this is putting the pictures to what we've been talking about last time, that nothing, no one is safe anymore anywhere. So I would think in Lahaina, you know, cash crop is gone, so it's all dry, so it all burns away. This is in the middle of our island here in Mililani Malka. It, it happens as well. And to the right is Kendall Leonard just finishing up his dock project, which is about lubricating, irrigating, uh, hydrating the urban rehydrating that, bring water. And this is a fishy fenestration, as I eye-winkingly call it, where he brings the tradition of fish ponds to high rises. And uh, next, uh, next slide, 56, which is my last one, because it's going to be the preview of what we're going to do next uh, semester, uh, luckily together, Martin, which is, again, uh, a synergy between our uh, future leaders in the hospitality industry, which is our major uh, industry, and then us as architects who are facilitating that as the built environment. And so we have to think about, again, retrofitting. I like to reuse the term as as to provoke us, as to think about what can we bring back and what also we, we then bring that, you know, we bring the first time. Your thoughts on that, guys, in four minutes left? I wanted to say something that, that I think is relevant to Lahaina, and, and both of you can relate to it from where you are from. Martin, after World War II, many of the cities of Europe were completely destroyed, badly damaged or completely destroyed, particularly in your home country of Germany. And they faced tremendous challenges in rebuilding. And uh, Martin, you just were talking about the volcano eruption in the 1980s that destroyed an entire city. How do you come back? Well, the, the balance is, how do you balance trying to recreate what was there? In other words, what things people have sentimental attachments to, which they want to see brought back against and with modernizing, innovating, and doing things that are more sensible. In other words, in very, very pragmatic things like traffic and managing traffic, uh, creating better parking, creating things like that. These are things that have to be balanced, particularly in Lahaina, because its appearance was so important to how people perceived it and wanted to come and visit it. So if we were to remake it entirely as a space age new place that didn't look anything like it had before, there would be resistance to that on the part of people who live there as well as those in the tourist industry who would say, but they loved the way it looked old fashioned. So with that in mind, recreating it to an extent is probably a requirement. And yet, at the same time, that recreation must be innovative. It must be more thoughtful with the environment. It must be better with energy usage. It must be better in the, in the concept of 
pulling back from the ocean, which is going to be further encroaching. So all of those things have to be taken into account when we are looking at the reconstruction of an entire urban area. And the good thing is we have a lot of other places to look at to see how it's been done to say, we like this, we don't like that. And certainly in, in Europe, there were places where they recreated everything as closely as they possibly could. And there were other places where they started from scratch and made it all different and modern. Yeah, yeah and since also, you addressed just, Europe, yeah, go ahead, Martin. Oh, just the, the no. fact of, of bringing uh, the, the community uh, to the center of the idea, no? Like, but people, even from the touristic, like bringing the museification word back is the, the what people like to see, like what tourists would, would like to see is the specificity of the place. What is this specifically? How was this before many of the like neo-colonial buildings uh, arrived? Uh, let's think about identity in the most in the broader way, also as 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 identity uh, evolving. Yes, yes. Uh, Soto, you just provoked me, so you just shame on you, blame you. This can't be the last time we get to together discuss this because you just by triggering you just. You know, hit a nerve that's just like going crazy now. So we, but we're at the end of show time. So we have to leave this for another time, probably then uh, next week. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But also, thank you, guys. So uh, that being said, yeah, um, more, I guess, about that. And after all, I just say as an appetizer or as a teaser for it, for that next time. After all, like it or not, many in who I don't like it who are from here, rightly so. And what your hat, one of your your one half is from here, the Soto Hawaiians. But we are in America, and America plays a big role in that. It has played a big role in my culture. If you guys, if your American side, the Soto hasn't helped my culture back on its feet, we wouldn't be where we are. And I at least told myself I will never forget that. Do I then okay everything that America does these days? Certainly not. And and I want my America back, which again, uh, farewell to you, uh, Rosalind, um, wherever you go from here, because that's the America I want back. And so that's up for discussion next time. But until then, please stay memorably memorable, memorably um, membering. Bye-bye. <laughs>